Hello, and welcome to Let's Try. We're trying Cantata. This is uh, this just came out, um, and it is really cool. It's basically a uh, tactical RPG meets Factorio, maybe. Gotta say, obviously, it was drawn in by this really cool original-looking art, and uh, it's it's got a real interesting flair to it that you will see. Uh, I hope you will appreciate it. We're gonna start with chapter one. I've done this tutorial. I know vaguely how the game works. Uh, this art is so ridiculously good, honestly. Uh, the, Shotar, the Shotar of Mars. As Shotar of Mars, you are heir to a mighty dynasty reaching back countless aeons. Pursuit of the machine traders has led you to the abandoned colony, Planet Shoal. Finish off Vashti once and rid the galaxy of their scourge so that the rain may once again inspire peace throughout the galaxy. Melt them to slag. I should mention, this game is in early access, so uh, problems are bound to occur, uh, and we will forgive this game for that. The 111th rain, seven warships. Seven, each one loaded with enough troops, ammunition, and fuel to mount an assault on any system within three jumps of here. Okay, so what kind of game is this? Well, it's a... If you're if you've played games like Fire Emblem, uh, you will be pretty accustomed to the kind of game experience you can expect here. I didn't want to turn it down that much. So um, yeah, you can expect kind of an advanced wars style gameplay or Fire Emblem if you like, or even Into the Breach. Um, it's got that kind of uh, down to earth simplistic nature, a little bit of a chess warfare going on. But uh, the difference, what sets this game apart, is that there is an interesting method of building up your towns or headquarters or cities. And also, um, the way you kind of push or gain territory is a little bit novel. Although we have probably seen it before, it's, it's still something a bit new. So what are we going to do? We're going to move these guys. These are our conscripts. They're our basic units. They're basic but they're still important. They have banners. We need banners to basically take new territory. So these rickshaws, um, these are fast moving vehicles. Um, we're gonna load up both of these lads and we're gonna ship out. We're gonna move to this territory over here and take it. Those things that came out of the trees, like wild creatures, like walking nightmares. Everyone, everyone's gone. Someone get the soldier Get the soldier back to the front lines. Oh my god. Um, so we just gained another uh, conscript. Uh, we're also going to want to build some stuff. Um, so you have basically um, maybe two forms of action currency in this game. Uh, every single character or every single unit has uh, a move action and an attack action. Uh, that's it. Um, pretty, it's pretty simple stuff. But um, you also have global action or action points. You use these to build buildings. Buildings are good. We like buildings. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're going to want to build things like a refinery. Um, this is going to cost us resources. Resources, um, well, these are just global resources. We're, we need those for various different things. I would like to be able to gather and gain more resources. But once we get those kind of resources, then we can do stuff like build... Uh, refineries, engine factories, and it's going to start to look a little bit like an, a big old automation um, system. So uh, let's go ahead and we're going to we're going to move our um, rickshaw over here and maybe pick up this other guy if we can. Oh, there's a there's a unit, a bad guy, that walker in the center. Its legs are shot to pieces. They must have been unwilling to leave one of their own behind. It's almost foolish, idiotic, weak-willed. Precisely my thoughts, sire. Machine sighted, sir. Warriors of the 111th, 111th reign of harmony and prosper. Destroy them. This guy is a, is a little bit big on himself. So this this uh, rickshaw is already full um, for units, so we can't pick up this other lad. So we're going to have him move. So we'll see what, uh, what comes over here and attacks us. Ooh, oh, we got rid of our banner right away. Went right for it. Um, all right, so we're gonna wanna unload. Um, our other conscripts. 
This, uh, this rickshaw can also attack. It is a ranged unit. It cannot really attack. It can attack basically um, in a sort of donut formation around it. It cannot, it, it can't attack like very adjacent creatures or enemies. It needs to, it needs to fire at range. So we can, we can attack this guy over here. Um, then we'll get our conscripts to attack. These guys are a little bit beefier than you might think. So we killed one. This guy gained two XP for doing so. Not sure if uh, he is the only one that gained XP. It seems like conscripts are the ones that gain XP. Rickshaws, not so much. They're just vehicles. We might want to do something. Transforms into encampment. Encamped conscripts, better defended and better range. We might want to do something like that. Um, we could do something like that. Why not? Let's let's see how that works. Uh, we can also. I haven't looked at the tech tree. There's this as well to consider, but uh, I think we're gonna need more resources before that becomes relevant. Have we? I think we've used all of our conscripts. We can also spend um, some global or like you know some of our action points to do a surge move, which is basically um, to have a you know a unit move again. But I don't know if I have enough. It might cost two action points to do something like that. All right. Well, we'll we'll, we'll end the turn and we'll see how bad these these guys are for hurting us. Ah, wow. So they they murdered my friend here. Um, this encampment was is gonna have to do some of the heavy lifting here. Can we we can hit them again? So it costs three action points to to surge them. We don't want to necessarily use that right away. Although it might be good because then we can get rid of all of them. Okay, so we did a surge attack there. You can see we used up three action points uh, for doing so. Now we will, I'm gonna load up my dude here. Can't load up an encampment, obviously, that makes sense. All right, so we, uh, we can move over. I don't know if necessarily it would be a great idea to move over or play aggressively. I don't know what kind of, um, if this thing has attacks over here, it might be the, enemy's version of a vehicle in which case it would have an attack so there's some resources we definitely want those um there's a small machine base up ahead sir what are you waiting for attack Let's see if we can't make some magic happen here oh but they've already attacked this turn so i've actually just moved all of our units into range of uh of the enemy and then uh left them for dead basically left them as sitting ducks that's real bad. Oh, don't don't attack him. Oh god, it's awful. Can we do a tower close to here? So we, this would uh, give us more um, conscripts, basically. Yes, we can. And this is a this will also heal units. I should have um, placed it near this encampment. I could have healed it. Okay, so we're not you know we're not uh, doomed by any stretch. Radio tower, support infrastructure that allows you to extend your vision outside. So there's a lot of stuff. I've learned about basically these four or five uh, items or, or buildings. Everything else is kind of a mystery to me, um, which is great. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, figuring out what it all means. Let's go ahead and end the turn, and hopefully they'll come to us without being able to attack. Classic move. Let them come to you, you know. And we'll start wailing on them. How much? They only have uh, three health. Cool. I would actually like this specific conscript to damage this thing last, so we can give give it some more XP. I'll have this one move back so that it doesn't. It's it's not in danger. I wanna I wanna try and level up a conscript just to see what uh, what do they get for doing so. And it does seem like you know basically credit is everything. Um, Let's get, uh, this one is, is almost halfway towards level two to kill it. They didn't seem to get anything for that. Might want to build another tower so I can heal and then also throw down some more, um, conscripts. I'm not sure what the limitations to building towers is. Oh, well, there's a cooldown for one thing. It does cost resources, obviously, but it also, um, costs time. So can we throw down a banner? This costs uh, quite a lot of energy, 
Well, it costs energy and as well as uh, resources, but it might be worth doing this. So this is all bad. The heart owned by player two enemy. Okay, so there's a lot of dudes. I think I'm actually going to back up. So you can set how much this produces. This will use up our global resource and it, in, in its stead, it builds alloys. Alloys are something we are going to want for things like engine factories, refineries. We do want, we really do want this uh, mining facility to go down over here, but that might not be able to happen yet. So I guess those X's mean um, there are enemies over there, but we don't know what kind of enemies yet. So these guys seem to have an uh, auto attack kind of counter attack. It's interesting, these guys have different health amounts. Obviously the encampment has more health, that makes sense. All right, so let's, let's back up. Oh, okay, so they have an attack of opportunity. Um, good to know. I wonder, maybe these things don't need to be next to a unit in order to heal someone. Could they heal like this guy? Outside of range. Oh, I see. They can only, yeah, they can only heal adjacent units. Okay, so what we could do is we could build um, this guy right here, and then this could heal our encampment. It can heal it once. Oh, and then there's a hefty cooldown. <laughs> My goodness, okay. Excuse me, tower transport? These things move. Oh my god. Yo, I had no idea. I honestly had no idea that they could do that. So I think um, maybe we could build our mining facility now. In fact, oh, my, can't be placed in neutral or enemy owned region. Right, I'm not gonna do the banner yet until I know that I've killed basically everything. I'm still, I'm still trying to figure things out. The, the, you know, the rickshaw, the tower, um, they have a nice chunk of health. So I'm thinking the, the good decision it would be to um, move the things that have a lot of health and then dump all the conscripts in an area in which they can attack something and then load up again. Oh, uh, never mind. This thing has a lot of health. Okay, that is everything. We are all within range. However, there are a lot of targets. I'm not sure who it's going to want to attack. It does two damage, however. Um, it can kill quite a few of these guys. I could turn... Well, I can't really do it now, but I could turn some of them into encampments. Ah, I'm also within range of this thing, apparently. I could transform this unit. I think that that would be a bad idea. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna load up all of our, our all of our conscripts here to protect them. That's probably the way you should do that. We'll attack the tower. Still not gonna be able to uh, destroy it, but we will. We'll, what we'll do is we'll move out of the way of these other units in the hopes that we can't we we don't get destroyed by them. Oh, there's stuff going on over here that I completely ignored. Okay. We can transform this guy back into a normal conscript. That's actually really good to know. And these guys also have a counterattack, so he died when I attacked the Builder Drone. A lot of things going on in this game. Uh, the tactics are actually really savage. Player level increased to two. Bah, what is taking so long? Sire, our warriors appear ill-equipped to handle such an entrenched defensive position. Blithering fools. Have they no imagination at all? We could perhaps provide assistance to help speed things up. Ugh, very well. Prepare an orbital drop. So we have a grand bombard. Look at this guy. I love the artwork in this game so much, honestly. So, so much. It's so refreshing. Like, I haven't really seen anything like this too much. So we have a Grand Bombard. This is going to do what? Okay, so now we can move and attack. We can. The range on this guy is very novel. It's a it's a big old donut for sure. So we can see. Uh, we can't really see where the enemies are, but we can see where the enemies are within range of this thing. So that's the important information. So now hopefully we can attack this thing. 
And it does a lot of damage to this thing, so that's nice. And it's also outside of range of the of this heart. And also we're keeping our other dude safe, so um, that's that's good. It is, however, going to take a few turns to kill this thing. Oh, it also has a hefty cooldown, so we're gonna have to wait like two turns between attacks. We should be able to kill this thing now, as long as I don't do anything dumb. They leveled up. Nice. Perk, max health. This perk adds two health to the max health. This guy is the level two guy. So we wanna, we wanna hit them with a level one conscript for sure. They did level up. Player un, uh, leveled up to level three. We really do need some more uh, material though. So we're gonna have to take this territory. We'll take it. Can he move and attack now? Okay, so he can move and attack, but both move and attack have separate cooldowns. <clears throat> what is that sound? There's the module, but it suffered serious damage. People live in such squalor? Well, not anymore, sire. Oh, hatchback. Oh, it's that thing is pretty nasty. Is this guy gonna move? It doesn't look like he's gonna move. Ah, uh, we're just we're just outside of range. Does it tell us how much damage? What? Oh, that tree? Oh my god. The tree blocked us from seeing him. Okay, he's he's moving over now. He does three damage. Oh my god. All right, let's let's get out of Oh, and I took an attack of opportunity outside of range. Oh god. Okay, so we're going to have to use some sur uh, surge point just to attack him now. Let's hit him with our bombard. It'd be really cool if we could get our conscript to do the last damage. It's only got one damage left. Yes, foul beast. At least we know what happened to the colonists now. Download whatever data remains in the colony module. You can destroy an old banner. I'm hoping I don't need to have this territory in order to gain resources from this territory. Like you don't need a direct line back to our base, but we'll find out, we'll see for ourselves. Either way, we have two banners. I guess this territory uh, required two banners in order to take. It required more pressure than just the one banner. So um, we've gone and we've, we've taken it now because we have the two banners. Now we should be able to build our uh, mining facility and actually start gaining back some resources. There we go. So that's good. We're all good with that now. And now we're getting plus five resources per turn. Uh, this mining facility is only, it's only got 50. So we're only gonna get five resources per turn for 10 turns, um, which you know, that makes sense. Uh, but now we can like actually start considering building like factories and stuff. There's also more stuff over here we could try and take. But I think for now, let's let's just try and, and uh, make use of what, we, what we've got. This place is so lush. When we're done here, perhaps a resort would turn a profit. Maybe now start thinking about building some stuff. Um, basically, every building has a range outside of it that... Um, you can't build within. They, they they don't like to be placed like right next to each other. So now we've we finally got our refinery down. This is going to start producing, uh, well, I think gas. I believe it is gasoline. We do want to make an engine factory. We also want to make a garage. This requires gasoline and engines, right? Makes sense. So let's, we'll build our engine factory and then we will build our garage. Invalid placement owned region landing zone can only contain up to three infrastructure. Oh no. What we could do is build a supply line or we could take this territory back. We, we actually do have enough resources to do so. Get this guy first and then we'll come over here and then we'll place a banner. So now we own this uh, territory. That means we can build in it as well. And that means we can build a garage. Might be better a better idea to build a garage further away anyway. Okay, so that's gonna work out perfectly fine. So we have a garage coming in. We could build a ceremonial temple. So maybe we wanna start thinking about getting to the next area. We can, um, this thing's gonna take a little bit of time to gather enough resources, like actual turns. 
there's a lot of things to consider in this game and I think that you do want to kind of pick and choose your your strategies you don't want to just like build everything right Ooh. okay what are these finbacks they do two attack or two damage per attack they don't move too far we can just barely not reach them so let's move our bombard and then uh, hit them they have two damage left, or two health left. Maybe we can um, get kill this one with our conscript. I'm a little bit concerned. These guys, I think their range is not going to be enough to reach our conscripts. Oh, I, he did two damage? This guy does two damage now. Oh, bummer. <laughs> I think if you're careful, you you can kill things without risking yourself. But doing so is a little bit tricky. Player level increased to five. He's almost level four. This conscript is, is a beefy, beefy dude. It, I noticed the territory is still red. Another machine base ahead, sire. This is Vashti's resistance. Clean them out from the ground they stomp on. So, okay, so the, when we look at a territory, we can see there the weight on the right we need to apply 21 pressure to make it neutral or possibly just destroy the enemy that's occupying it in order to shift that back over. And then we need to plant some flags to shift it from neutral to, you know, green. Might be better or easier to take out, uh, take the swamp area. And yeah, we can see it only takes like 10. First of all, it's neutral, but it would only take 10 uh, units of pressure, whatever you want to call it to shift it to our side and then we could get some more resources. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Visibility is low. I think I, I think I saw something moving. So let's plant some flags. Only applies five units of pressure. And so we need one more flag to take this. Now it is ours. We can uh, plant some mining facilities. I think this is a pretty good place to stop. I mean, you, I, you, you can probably see where things are going. I'm tempted to do a series on this game. I, I've, I've been really enjoying the kind of turn-based tactics, um, like almost renaissance of, of new games coming up, uh, like Songs of Conquest and, and now this. And there's, a, there's others coming as well. I mean, Advanced Wars is coming back. Who knew, right? Um, but in any case, I think that you've... I've shown adequately the, the the kind of gameplay you can expect from this game. We've got a little bit of automation. It's it's a little bit different. There's a lot more going on with this with this than you you might think. And of course, we have some really really cool artwork. So this is Kentata. If you enjoyed this, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.